This week, we find ourselves on the very first British Airways flight into Cape Town since the pandemic began. We head south into dramatic and dangerous places where two oceans collide and meet some of Africa's local wildlife. Just the little guys for now, with lizards, penguins and baboons. And we learn about a dark past that changed the world on an island that was named after seals. We are the Newbies, a family of travel adventurers on a mission to make our minutes and seconds matter. I'm Tara, born and raised in Africa and obsessed with wild things and wild places. This is John. He's lived a life on the road and has visited 163 countries. And this is our son Crusoe, who has ambitions to get to 100 countries before he goes to school. He's going to need our help with that, so hit that subscribe button and join us every Sunday as we discover our extraordinary world as a family, teaching us all to be brave, think big, and to explore. But it, we have packed, it's taken us hours. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I thought I'd pack light. Turns out I haven't. We've somehow managed to fill three chicken bags, three hand luggages, a baby backpack and a car seat. It's a different kettle of fish traveling with a baby, for sure. Have we remembered everything? I have no idea. I can't find the phone charger. That's the start of it all, isn't it? Okay, so what's the important pieces? Crusoe. Okay. Tick. Yes. There he is, little man. Passports. Check. You sure? Yes. Okay. Cruiser needs a birth certificate. Okay. We've got that. Good. Laptops. Yeah. Yep. Um, credit cards. Yeah. John. Yeah. Tara. Dummy. Nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. Off we go. Off we go. Come on then. Let's Come go. Come on then. Let's go. Are we ready? We're ready. Oh my God, I'm so excited. I've never traveled with this much stuff before in my life. We've just been sent to Zone E, which is apparently especially for families. That's a first. True, so our boarding passes have cartoons on them. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. I have genuinely never been this excited to get on a long haul flight in my life. Shut up, really? Yeah, I've been excited before, but this is like next level <laughs> excited. <laughs> Actually, people are even getting in the way. This is so cool. The airport is busy again. The boards are full of flights. Oh man. Almost it feels, feels good. normal. It feels, apart from the masks, it feels completely normal. After one of the best and warmest check-in and security experiences ever, we made our way towards the gate, gearing up for our first long wolf flight with Crusoe and relishing in the excitement of the world feeling like it's opening up again. We were finally on our way. Well, I would say we have lucked out massively. We've, uh, we're flying economy, of course. We've got seats at the front row, um, which means we've got a bucket load of space and Crusoe will have somewhere to play around our feet. Twelve hours in the air passed quite quickly, with little Crusoe clocking his best sleep ever with a solid nine hours of unbroken sleep, and a little cuddle with mum as we came into land. Unbeknownst to us, we were on a very special flight, and on the ground in South Africa was the warmest welcome we could ever have asked for. Feel a bit emotional about that. Absolutely. So apparently this is the first British Airways flight into Cape Town since the pandemic. Yeah. It's a whole welcoming committee, all the airport staff are there taking photographs of the plane. Yeah. The emergency yeah. services were lining the runway. Yeah. Oh, you've just been welcomed off the aeroplane as well. Check that. I just got goosebumps. 
Yeah. Everybody's very excited. See that crew, so they're excited to see you. his third continent um, and I'm feeling pretty fresh after that yeah it's amazing what a warm welcome will do for a tired thing isn't exhausted. it exhausted exhausted Crusoe well, that... had more sleep than everyone else on the plane put together he did I mean he just basically slept the entire flight he slept more on that aeroplane than he would do at home yeah. <laughs> we're contemplating moving into an aeroplane we've arrived in Cape Town Without doubt, one of my favorite places and favorite cities in the whole wide world. It's where the mountains meet the sea, beautiful beaches, incredible food, amazing wine, and just great people. So we are super excited to be here. We've got a couple of things planned over the next few days, but our first stop is something that I've never done before, which is a visit to Robben Island, which is of course where Nelson Mandela was imprisoned for 27 years off the coast of Cape Town. That's quite right, and before that, it was a leprosy colony. It's quite an incredible history of this little island. Um, and we're off on a ferry to the island for a tour, and then we'll be back again later this afternoon. Crusoe's ticket. So she took my telephone and she took a picture of her computer screen and so we've got Crusoe's ticket as a photo. There it is. Nice work little man, you're allowed to come. Off we go. Off we go. The tour around the island by bus took about 45 minutes and drove us past important historical landmarks such as the leper graveyard from the island's years as a leper colony and the quarry where Nelson Mandela himself worked every day for 13 years. We weren't allowed off the bus apart from one stop where we could admire a beautiful view of Table Mountain across the water. That's the best part of the tour over and done with. We are now going into the prison where we're going to have a look around and be shown around by an ex prisoner. Yeah, an ex um, political prisoner. So um, they may or may not have been in with Nelson Mandela. I'm not sure. We'll find out shortly. We are now in B section. They sing in cell section one person per cell. That's where all our leaders were confined. This is the photo of this place, B section project. Here, prisoners were crushing stones during that period of hard labor. Robben Island is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and probably one of the most famous islands in the world. It has been serving as a prison and place of isolation since the mid 17th century, with its most notorious chapter being that when political prisoners battling against the apartheid regime were jailed here. It is, of course, where Nelson Mandela spent 18 of his 27 years in incarceration. Being shown around the prison by an ex-political prisoner is an extraordinary privilege. To contemplate the sacrifices they made for their freedom, the battle they fought for what they believed in, 
and to hear firsthand of the horrific experiences they faced as a result was truly humbling. Our tour of the prison came to a close with a visit to Nelson Mandela's cell. A real moment as you stand in a space not much bigger than a cupboard that was once home to one of history's greatest leaders and surely one of the most inspirational human beings who ever lived. Yeah, amazing to stand in the presence of somebody who nearly lost everything fighting for what they believe in. Yeah. With our tour completed, it was time to head back to the mainland where we would be heading south, as far south as Africa would allow us. Passing Table Mountain and driving along one of the world's most spectacular coastal roads, which winds its way out of Cape Town and towards Cape Point, wrapping itself along the cliff edge of Chapman's Peak and offering the most magnificent views out over the Atlantic Ocean. Right, we have arrived at Cape Point and the Cape of Good Hope. I think we've got to walk that way and then we'll be at Africa's most southerly point. Very exciting, isn't it? Pretty exciting. So there is a funicular here um, that can take us up to the top where the lighthouse is, or we can walk. Let's do that. Well, come on then. <laughs> Let's go. And I remember being here back in 1999, dosed up on Larium, thinking it would be okay to jump off the edge of this walkway because I'll just fly. Oh dear. Marion will do that to you. Let's hope the throat lozenges won't. <laughs> I, I, think, I think I need a bit more than a throat, throat lozenger at the moment, don't you? That's good news. You're supposed to be doing all the talking. I know. Yeah. But here we are. Here we are. Some might say John's always talking. Some might. That is quite a spectacular beach down there. It Look is, isn't it? If there wasn't so much we want to see today, I'd say let's just go park off down there. Yeah, it's true, but we've got penguins Beautiful. waiting for it. Penguins? Yeah, penguins are waiting. Cape Point is part of Table Mountain National Park and is a very, very special place. If you ever find yourself in Cape Town, it's worth the hours and a bit drive to get over here. As well as being where the tip of Africa juts ruggedly towards Antarctica, it's also where two great oceans, the Indian and the Atlantic, meet. It's not just the big things that make this park so special. Look closely and you'll notice an abundance of plants, birds and small animals doggedly living on this piece of rock that John once nearly, accidentally, jumped off. <laughs> They're cool, aren't they? They're so sweet. They look a bit like, I don't know, hulks. Robust. Yeah, like thugs. They're like the thugs of the lizard world. Anyway, the lighthouse used to have 2,000 candle power in it, but actually proved completely ineffective because how, of how misty this part of the Cape gets. Um, and it, it was when a, a Portuguese ship was shipwrecked off the coast here, having not seen the lighthouse because it was misty, that they decommissioned it. Yeah, and then they built a new one down at Danger Point. Then they built a new one down at Danger Point. So these are historical lighthouse cottages built in around 1860, and they were used to house visitors to the lighthouse keeper so that he wouldn't get, or the family wouldn't get lonely down here. When we started this walk, the sign said it was going to take an hour and a half and I was like, oh please, don't be so ridiculous, it's just there. But the thing is, there's so much to see, there's so many beautiful birds, the flowers, the views, the lizards. 
so it has taken us quite some time we were hoping to be able to fly the drone down here because it would be magnificent drone footage but it is a no drone zone and i think that's got a lot to do with the nesting seabirds here who are incredible master flyers because winds at this point can reach gale force quite often so there's lots of things like cormorants there's south africa's second rarest coastal nesting bird which is the african black oyster catcher and um, sometimes people see albatross but what's really cool, the colour of this water is magnificent and every now and then we can see a seal playing in the waves. I could spend all day here. The end of the world. Let's go check it out. So not only is this the most southerly point of Africa, it's also the point where the Indian and Atlantic oceans meet. South Pole is that way. Antarctica, next piece of land. Cool. And with that, there was only one way left to go, around face and back heading north up towards our overlanding adventure where we'd be picking up our new truck and heading out into the bush for the next three or four months. If there was ever a great place to start an adventure such as the one that we have waiting for us, then surely this was it. But first, we had promised Crusoe a few penguins. The last time John and I had seen a penguin was in Antarctica, almost two years ago. And so we were all very excited to be visiting our clumsy little feathered friends. So what do you reckon? Should we go see some penguins? That's not a sign you see every day. Certainly isn't. Penguins in the road. Mighty oh, keep Heaven. your eyes peeled, team. Positively tropical today. White beaches, blues, blue seas. The sun is shining, blue skies, and we're going to see a penguin. It does feel all rather strange. It does, doesn't it? I see a penguin. Check it. Crusoe, look, there's penguins. And so Crusoe spent the next half an hour chit-chatting with the penguins, as only a nine-month-old baby and a penguin could. This is the very start of what we plan to be over 16 weeks on the road in Southern Africa. Episode one, so to speak. Remember, if you're enjoying these videos or are just curious about how this journey ends up and where, then hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, click on the thumbs up and leave us a comment because it's always great to hear from you. We will see you next Sunday, friends.